So, we need to talk about Afghanistan, okay? How many of you know what Afghanistan is? Wait a minute. I know you all know what Afghanistan is, okay? But there's something that we need to talk about before, before we get into talking about Afghanistan, okay? All right? And what that is, is media literacy, okay? So what this is going to be before we start, before we dig in on the Afghanistan situation, I am going to teach you all a, a couple of very basic quick tips and habits that can help you genuinely improve your media literacy, okay? And when I say media literacy, what do I mean? Does that mean, oh, uh, does, uh I'm literate. I can read words. That's not what I mean. You see, um, media literacy is about understanding how to navigate uh, the, the unfathomably complex world of mass media. Every single day, we have blogs, tweets, uh, articles, uh, opinion pieces that aren't articles, but that disguise themselves as articles, ads that disguise themselves as articles, okay? Um, and, and, and a lot of people have some level of media literacy, but very few people have sort of like disciplined or structured media literacy. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to give us a real quick, very simple, just point by point guide to some basic media literacy. Okay. It's, it's really, it's really interesting. Okay. Um, let me just get this here. We're going to put this here. Do, 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 do. I've had that song stuck in my head. Okay, here we go. All right. So, media literacy guide. Demon Mamas media literacy basics. All right. Bam. Number one. Okay. The number one media literacy basic. Do not trust headlines. Okay? This is very, very simple. Okay? Headlines are never trustworthy. Ever. Okay? And when I say that, um, I mean never. Even the most reliable sources, are the, the headline is not trustworthy and the reason for that is because headlines are an advertisement for the piece in capitalism everything has to be eye-catching which means the headline will always always have um a a level of of uh spectacle around them they are always clickbait it's the only way that you can possibly um that you can that you can possibly get your story out there in the current timeline. So we have to recognize this and accept it. Do not trust headlines, okay? I know this sounds like the most basic thing ever, but we've all had it happen. Even me. Even me being very media literate, having grown up on pol political media, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, okay? Um, headlines are not to be trusted. You always should go and at the very least read the article, okay? Okay, so that's number one. Headlines in capitalism are an advertisement, even at the best outlets. Okay, two. All right, this is the second part, okay? Be aware of the genre or classification of the piece, okay? This is something that a lot of people unintentionally mess up. And this is not because they're stupid or bad or anything like that or dishonest or anything like that. This is because many places are deliberately misleading about this, okay? Be aware of the genre or classification of the piece. Editorial slash opinion these have very low journalistic 
okay? They have very low journalistic requirements. If you're reading a piece that's an editorial or an opinion, you should take it with an extra eye of scrutiny, okay? Because editorials and opinions, do, are because they're specifically advertised as an editorial or an opinion, that means that they don't have the same journalistic standard as everything else. And there are a lot, lot of editorials and opinions out there. In fact, editorials and opinions make up a huge portion of, of modern media, okay? Um, for example, my stream is mostly editorial, okay? It is me giving my opinion and one of the things you'll notice is that i'm very clear about that i am a political edutainer you're watching my show to learn some stuff so that you can know where to look next okay an opinion piece is genuinely just a hot take column treat it like someone posting a spicy take well that's true but here's the thing some editorials are very valuable there are wonderful editorials out there there are wonderful opinions that people have that and some editorials put a lot of evidence into the stuff that they do but you have to be aware of the genre or classification okay here's another one um ad i think they're called advertorials is that what it's called is that the term i always get this one mixed up is it advertorial yes okay yes an advertorial this is also known, uh, uh, these were, these are very popular. An advertorial, I know it's a hideous name, but, but whatever. An advertorial is an advertisement that is hidden in the form of an editorial. You might see something, uh, this is an ad in the shape of an editorial or opinion. Um... There's huge amounts of money in advertorials. Yes, there is. There is so much money, you have no idea. And yes, what you want to look for, the, the giveaway of an advertorial is brought to you by or sponsored, sponsored by or uh, on behalf of, etc. These are the signs of it and they have to list it but they sometimes list it else like it hard to find okay they can sometimes be very hard to find that information but these are egregious now some of them are like like here i can give you an example of one of these real quick um watch this okay here we go Let's see if this is one of the ones. I'm going to try and find one of these just live right now. Uh, this one isn't one of them, actually, believe it or not. So if you search... Oh, yeah. If you search stuff like this... Look at this. Here's a great example. Now, Consumer Reports... Um, oh, no audio? Oh, I'm sorry about that. I hope you enjoy the VOD, okay? Okay. We have every, everything's, uh, okay. Uh, so now consumer reports tends, I mean, in the past they tend to be very good, but if you look at this, oh look, here's one. When you shop through retailer links on our site, we may earn affiliate commissions. 100% of the fees we collect are used to support our nonprofit mission. So like this is, this is them having to tell you that they make money off of every one that they put in here. Do you see how that is? They're literally making money off of recommending these and they get a, a cut of it, which means that they're, they're incentivized to sell you more expensive vacuums because they get a cut when you buy it. So you see, you have to watch out for stuff like this because even though this isn't a traditional advertorial, this is one. So this is an example of advertorials. You need to be careful. Uh, listicles are also bad, but most people recognize that. Listicles are usually the same thing, okay? Now, so there's the second rule, okay? Number one is don't trust headlines. Number two is be aware of the genre or classification of the piece, okay? And this is the third one, okay? Are you ready? Number three, okay? Be cognizant 
of bias, okay? And I know this sounds obvious, that you should be cognizant of bias, but you have to be really, really cognizant of bias, okay? And this becomes especially true when you are reading about specifically foreign policy and politics, okay? Every single, every single newspaper has a bias of some to some degree there is no such thing as unbiased objective journalism now there are some that are better and there are some that are worse okay but you will see this in all kinds of things there are biases in things that like give me, let me give you an example here's one example right there officer involved shooting okay an officer in involved shooting that is something that many, many places that are biased towards the police will put in to make it seem uh, harder to tell what's actually going on. What that means is a cop shot somebody, but they say officer involved shooting because that confuses people. People don't really know what that means. You know what I mean? And then of course there's stuff like RT. Here we go. Let's give some other examples. More obvious examples more obvious examples uh rt equals russia time russia today equals state sponsored media okay like literally russia today is state sponsored media it is state media they are owned and operated by the state yep we also have yep bbc now the bbc does have some good reporting but you have to be very careful about certain topics with the bbc because the bbc is british state media and they have published anti-irish anti-scottish they have done all kinds of things so you have to be very very careful okay bbc equals british state media PBS is U.S. state-funded media. Now, I will say, in the case of PBS, there is an NPR. There is a very small difference in that in the in the way that they're the way that they're set up. But it doesn't matter. You need to be careful about that. Yeah, NPR, PBS, Al Jazeera. Well, Al Jazeera has multiple locations. Al Jazeera US has different biases than Al Jazeera Al Jazeera ME. Okay? There's so many things that you have to watch out for. And so what I want what I want you to do is there is no possible way that you can disentangle every single um, every single news source to its absolute core. It's almost impossible to fully vet any news source as as an average person. OK, so what you have to do is you have to be cognizant of the bias. Um, be fucking cognizant of that bias. So viewers like you was a lie? No, that is true. Um, PBS is public funded media. Now, it's very complicated. Like I said about NPR and PBS, their funding mechanism is a little different. They are less, uh, they are, um, I don't want to say significantly less, but they are slightly less under the jurisdiction directly of the U.S. government because they're funded by donations. It's they 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 have taxes, but they are but they are mostly donations. So they can actually afford they can afford to defy the U.S. state in certain cases. But at the end of the day, they are still very biased on a lot of issues. Okay, so you have to be very careful about that. Okay, now this is the I like I said this is the basics of media literacy. But you will have a a much much better time, and a and you will come to better conclusions about politics 
if you recognize that there are massive and often very sinister biases at play in nearly every major media corporation, remember, remember that uh, most of media is owned by a handful of broadcasting companies, one of which is Walt Disney Corporation. You know that, right? You know that Disney, Disney owns multiple news channels. Fox owns multiple news channels. Isn't this borderline Trumpian fake news and all that question media? No. What are you fucking talking about? I'm saying that you. Sh this is basic media literacy. I raid God. What the fuck? Are you for? Are you being for real? There is so much good stuff that you can learn from from media, but you have to do so carefully. You have to ask questions. You have to be willing to to look deeper. Yeah, true. That that is a Papega take. You put Kappa, but that's a Papega take. And I and and oh yeah, Bloomberg is a great example. Bloomberg does some really good reporting, but you have to remember that Bloomberg's existence, first of all, Bloomberg is owned by the guy who whose computers run the entire stock market. So you have to recognize their bias is very deep. Bloomberg will never, ever threaten Wall Street, ever, because their entire existence is predicated on promoting Bloomberg and the, and, and, and the associated companies. Bloomberg is Wall Street. They can't. Because Vorbuddy, Vorbuddy says, oh no, how far have we come that this convo is seen as fake news talk? Holy shit. It is bad. But that's because the state of distrust right now in our society is out of control. Yes. Uh, the manufacture of consent. Yes. Exactly. I was about to talk about that, okay? And this is the last segment. This is the last piece. Resist the manufacturing of consent, okay? Okay, this is the last segment, okay? And I highly recommend Groovy Duke says another thing to consider. Journalism school doesn't require any high-level mathematics, law, or scientific journal literacy. Those skills are not guaranteed in articles about science or legal practices. I agree. Yes, of course. Absolutely, of course. Okay. Here's what I need you to to recognize, okay? Chomsky made a wrote a book called manufacturing consent um and uh we're not gonna inv i'm not gonna fully invoke the book here it's a great reading there's also a documentary on it that i think is fantastic that's free to watch on youtube it's called manufacturing consent super super cool okay now what is the manufacturing of consent okay the manufacturing of consent is when you are given the illusion of correct information but mostly what is being fed to you is circular sources so think about it like this you all have seen let me explain this to you i'll put myself up on screen and i'll uh and i'll i'll explain this okay okay so manufacturing of consent is like this um you read a New York Times article or something like that, okay? Let's just imagine a big newspaper that you all really like, okay? Uh, or that everybody really likes. CNN, NBC, doesn't matter. It, just imagine one, okay? And they're talking about usually a foreign policy issue or something to do with the police or the military. That's the most common ones. And if you, uh, what we call manufacturing consent is when basically they will source only sources that are favorable to a certain way of interpreting it so imagine it like this imagine if the only place that you got information on foreign policy was the u.s state department so for example the experts that they're citing the citations that they're giving you are documents that are published by one of the people involved in the thing it's like um another example of manufacturing consent is when there's a conflict with the police and then the news talks only to the police chief and they sell the police chief's story as correct. 
This happened in Seattle. A great example of this that happened was uh, there was. Did anybody here hear uh, the story about um, about Chaz Chop shaking down businesses for like protection money? Does that, did anybody hear that back back during the George Floyd stuff? Probably a lot of people did. You probably heard the story of like anarchists shaking down businesses. That was literally made up by the police chief. The news, the local news and the national news took the police chief's statement at face value and the police chief had no evidence. It was corrected later, of course, but by then the damage was already done and everybody now believes that there was this widespread shaking down of businesses. It never happened. It never happened. Yeah, Carmen Best lied. And guess what? There's no repercussion for that. There is no, re she can just do that. And the news reported on it uncritically. That is what we call the manufacturing of consent. They are giving you, they're, they're telling you, oh, you're very informed. But the only sources that they're giving you are sources involved in it. They are manufacturing your consent. So resist it, okay? When you read a story where there's two parties involved or three parties involved, ask yourself, are they fairly representing the perspective of all of these sides. Who are they quoting? Who are they asking? Is it is this entire article written for, uh, based on the perspective of only the police? Is this entire story written only on the perspective of the United States State Department? That is what you have to do. And this is the hardest step of all, okay? But these are the basic literacy things. Watch sources closely Listen for if only one side is being presented fairly. Watch for weasel words, which are weasel words are another thing. Actually, you know what? We're going to make this its own rule, okay? Five, watch out for weasel words, okay? Let me show you some weasel words. We're going to just bring it up because this is one of the most useful fucking articles you can get. All right. Here we go. Weasel word. Okay. Ready? A weasel word or an anonymous authority is an informal term for words and phrases aimed at creating an impression that something specific and meaningful has been said when in fact only a vague or ambiguous claim has been communicated. Examples include... Phrases like, some people say, most people think, researchers believe. Using weasel words may allow one to later deny any specific meaning if the statement is challenged, because the statement was never specific in the first place. Weasel words can be a form of uh, tergiversation and may be used in advertising, conspiracy theories, and political statements to mislead or disguise bias. There's a whole bunch of these. Look at this. A growing body of evidence. Okay, where's the raw data? People are saying, which people? How do they know? It has been claimed that. Who claimed it? Where and when? Critics claim, which critics? Clearly, as if the premise is already true. It stands to reason that, again, as if the premise is undeniably true. Questions have been raised. Who raised the questions? What's the flaw? I heard that. Who told you? There is evidence that, what evidence? The, is the source reliable? Now, it is impossible to not use some weasel words at some point, okay? Like, it, it happens. Weasel words happen in conversation. But you have to be careful when you're seeing weasel words in media. You have to be very careful. And when you spot a weasel word, you should ask the question, okay, who was it? Sometimes there will be an answer. Sometimes the weasel word is is backed up in a later sentence but usually it isn't if you see a lot of weasel words if you hear a lot of weasel words then you got to be careful okay yes when people aren't being specific it's usually because they don't have anything okay watch out for weasel words people are saying Critics have claimed, experts believe, four out of five dentists support X. Okay? These are the things. Okay? 
So here we go. We're going to go through this one more time real quick, and then we're going to go in and we're going to read a bunch of articles about Afghanistan together. And then we're going to talk about um, my opinions on everything, okay? One, do not trust headlines. Headlines are advertisements, even at the best outlets. Two, be aware of the genre or classification of the piece. Editorials have low journalistic requirements. Advertorials have essentially no journalistic requirements. Listicles are similar to advertorials and usually very egregious. Be cognizant of the bias. Watch out for things like officer-involved shooting. Watch out for state media and, and media that is biased. Resist the manufacturing of consent. Watch your sources closely and listen for if only one side is being presented fairly, okay? And five, watch out for weasel words. People are saying, critics have claimed, experts believe, these sorts of things, okay? These are really, really important, okay? Yeah, Twitter screenshots can be used that way a lot. Sometimes Twitter screenshots uh, are used to sort of back up um, ridiculous claims that people make. They'll bring in a couple of Twitter stream screenshots, even though that doesn't prove anything. Okay? Constance says, also recognize that the story is being told, the premises of the story, and that the truth isn't always one side or the other. That's true. Correct. Thank you. No, it's all good. Don't worry. That's perfectly fine. True. True. Okay? So... Now that we have established a sort of basis for media literacy, all of these little ba basics, okay? All right? Now you have an idea. I want you to have this in your head. I'm going to put this little document up on the server, uh, you know, uh, at some point so that people can go review it. Um, I just need to edit these up. I have to also put up the, um, the mutual aid guide up there as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of examples of this, okay? There's of course there's of course egregious examples of obvious propaganda, but we also need to be cognizant of the disguised forms. We don't live in an era of prop well, we do, but we don't live in the era of propaganda posters where it's like an image of Uncle Sam being like, Uncle Sam wants you to fight. We don't really live in that world anymore we live in a world where the biases are disguised behind pretty bows 